Welcome back. So today on Commodities Market uh, Update, we'll be focusing on pineapples, a tropical sweet and sour fruit uh, popularly consumed in fruit salads and juices. Last year, pineapple was granted as the uh, Benin Republic's first geographical indication. And uh, these uh, geographical indications are internationally recognized legal labels that mark out uh, products as coming from specific regions. Let's uh, hear more now from Longi for analyst, financial derivatives company. Great to have you, Longi. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so what does this uh, geographical indication label mean for, you know, pineapple production and, and trade in, in Benin Republic and Nigeria by extension? So the importance of these geographical indication labels can definitely not be overstated. Uh, so just to give some context, uh, globally, products with these geographical indication labels account for sales of about uh, $83 billion a year. Uh, and uh, apart from that, what we've typically seen is when products get these uh, special geographical indication labels, they usually receive a premium of about uh, 43%. And in cases of wine, over 300%. So just to give you some examples, think of uh, champagne from France, uh, Parma from uh, Italy, and so on. Those are just some key examples. Now, uh, pivoting to Benin Republic and what this means, it's, uh, it's definitely a very big deal for the country and their uh, pineapple. So pineapple now from... Uh, specifically the sugar loaf uh, pineapple, which comes from uh, Benin Republic, is going to be recognized as coming from that specific region. So it's going to be very uh, good for the nation. It's going to be very good for trade. Uh, what we've typically seen is when uh, these indications are granted to products, farmers usually receive a large amount, or rather a large increase in their income. And this usually translates towards overall economic prosperity for the country and uh, so on. Uh, just to close off my point, uh, about 38% uh, of uh, Benin Republic works on farms. The people in Benin Republic, 38% of them work on farms. So an increase in the price of uh, pineapple will definitely translate towards a uh, more economic development and uh, prosperity for the nation. Quite interesting. And, you know, many African countries also seem to be taking advantage of these uh, geographical indications, such as I've seen Cameroon, Kenya, already benefiting, you know, what impact could these labels have on the wider Africa uh, agricultural scene? Yeah, so uh, they're already having a large impact. Like you rightfully said, uh, Cameroon. Cameroon's uh, Kenja peppers were the first uh, products from Africa to actually receive these labels in about uh, 2013. And since about that time, uh, the income of farmers producing these uh, Kenja peppers have grown about sixfold since uh, that time. So it's really quite a huge big deal. Now, we rightfully know Africa isn't really uh, known for its manufacturing. Most of our strength usually comes from uh, raw materials and uh, mining and so on. So the institution of these uh, special geographical uh, indications, which you could uh, rightfully term as intellectual property in some sort for food products, will likely lead to an increase in prices for these uh, specific commodities and will likely lead to competitive advantage for Africa in the production of these uh, commodities. All right, but is Nigeria at risk of, you know, being left behind here? And uh, what prospects are there for, for us getting this uh, geographical indication? What, what, what uh, uh, food crops do we have, you know, that can actually, you know, say, okay, this is actually from Nigeria? Yeah, so uh, definitely Nigeria is definitely at risk of being left behind, to say the least. Uh, just to give you some examples, Nigeria actually does qualify for a lot of these geographical indications, but we are unfortunately not taking advantage of it. So I uh, think of uh, Ofada rice, uh, Ijebu, Gari, and not just Pusof, think of uh, Adire. These are specific commodities that come from Nigeria. And New Yam, sorry, Abuja Yam, that's also another one. These are specific commodities that come from Nigeria that do in fact qualify for these uh, geographical indication levels, but then are not properly being utilized in the way that they could be. So, yeah, we're definitely at risk. Quite interesting. But, you know, Nigeria is the eighth largest pineapple, you know, producing country in the world. We, we produced an estimated uh, 1.5 million metric tons in 2020. But most of the uh, pineapple produced and sold in Nigeria is for domestic consumption. Do you see, you know, room for, you know, pineapple to be grown into a major export commodity for the country? Uh, it's possible. But I, I would say the main issue with that is that the, uh, species, the species of pineapple which grows in Nigeria, uh, specifically the smooth leaf and the yellow crown, aren't as in demand as other species grown uh, globally. So I do think if, if it would be possible to pivot uh, production towards just more in-demand species, it would definitely uh, boost Nigeria pineapple production. Because we have seen that Nigeria is, in fact, 
uh, likely and capable of producing these uh, pineapples. Unfortunately, it's just not being utilized and production just isn't being diverted in the right way to achieve this. All right, and I see uh, India made about $3.26 uh, million between uh, April and December from pineapple exportation. That's, uh, that's good money. All right, uh, Longida for Analyst Financial Derivatives Company. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.